welcome to my new video. I'm going to be showing you how to create a fitted cupboard. So I did this uh, in February this year, made out of Billy bookcases and you can watch the video on that. I will link that if you haven't watched it already. So this is the other side. This is much smaller because we have a radiator there and I have a very unusual bit there. So this is the new extension. So we're getting the customary cracks as it's been a year which we will sort, but I have a very unusual top. Now the width here is slightly different. So I'm using something called the Bursky. I think I said that right. I'll put it on the screen and that's what I'm gonna use. So let's get on. But first of all, please do hit the subscribe button. I have so many Ikea packs on my channel. Please do check them out, including this one here, which I did for 150 quid. Yeah. So the reason why I've chosen this one is because the Billy bookcase comes in a 40 and an 80, and I didn't want to chop it down, which I could have done. This is the perfect width. You'll notice I haven't even really finished painting all around here yet. We've had a nightmare with the skating boards. I won't bore you with it, but this one, I haven't done it because it's all gonna get painted. So this is the set. There's four shelves that I haven't put on it yet I either. This is a fixed shelf, really easy to build. It literally just has bolts there that you twiddle around into and it takes seconds to build. So that was super duper easy. I've just been and cut some wood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little base for it to raise it up. This is just a random piece of wood that I had. Here we go, this is it. So this is the wood. It is uh, 38 mil by 63 mil meters. That's how much I'm gonna come out from the from that way because if you'll see it does actually slightly stick out a little bit okay what i'm going to do first though i cleared it all off i've worked out the base but i am going to put some wallpaper which i used on my other uh unit and i've used in my laundry room i use this amazing wallpaper which is a 3d feel paneling style you can paint it it's brilliant i think it's 11 pounds a roll i'll link it but i'm going to put that at the back and if I'm ever so careful, which I really, mm, sadly, it's not quite wide enough for six under. I think it's about 55 wide or 52. So I'm going to put it on the wall and then I'll show you when I've done that. And it gives such a good backdrop. And the lovely wallpaper has dried beautifully. And then the top bit, I'm glad I did that. You can't really tell unless you're standing here that it's a little bit shorter, but that's all covered. I went to b and last night and I got some wood. So I'm gonna try and do this using pine. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can tell, can you see how bent this bit of wood is? That's, there you go, straight. Bit bendy that one but i've got a few different sizes of wood everything that i've bought i've got it all from bnq i will link it in the description box so i i've bought a couple of pieces in different thicknesses for different bits so the thickest bit because i've done some measuring is actually going to go down the side here to bring that out and then i'll put a piece in front of it i've bought it's in the car i'll show you that in a minute i bought some tongue groove to go up the side here because in my kitchen over here i have got a kind of tongue and groovy side to my kitchen but we still have not painted the walls um so i thought it'd be good and also it makes it a lot easier to cover that up and then i can just angle the cut and get a nice cut across there and just cover that in the tongue and groove so i haven't used any mdf i have got some off cutty bits here from another project that i might need to use just on this little top piece here um, so that's what I'm going to do. I got some strips to thicken the shelves again, which I did on my Billy bookcase. Uh, so I'm going to do lots of measuring, lots of cutting. I'll cut them all to size, and then I'll show you where I put them and how I've worked it out. Okay, first bit's gone in. I used a little bit of No More Nails just to hold it in place. I love using No More Nails. And then I've put in a couple of screws, pushed them right in. I know that the other side of this 
is wood. So I'll put some long screws in, push the right in, I'm gonna fill all the gaps and stuff. So that's that secured. Down here, I'm using this as a template um, on the bottom. My piece of wood is gonna fit in here. So that's, that's in. So my next bit to put on here is I'm gonna put the front. So I'm gonna cut that and get that on. Like I said, I'm actually gonna attach the top piece. Uh, I've put a small bit that I cut off there just to stop it sort of tilting backwards when I attach it. Um, Cause I'm literally just gonna attach it from this side. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of wood behind as well. It is actually touching at the top. So it won't shoot backwards, but I'll just put a little piece of wood there as well, just to stop it going backwards. Uh, Cause it's quite far forward. So I like that and that'll stop it going backwards. So I'm just letting that dry and then I'm gonna lift up and put that on I've top. I've screwed it in here, into the wood and then into the wood. And then I make sure I push them right in and then I'll put filler over the top so you don't see, I'm gonna fill all these holes. And then I've put a block here that I've no more nailed. So it makes it, did not, it was slightly wanting to lean back, so that's nice and solid now. So I'm gonna leave that to dry. Um, I had to cut, you can see at the back here, a bit of this off just to make it sit. So that's flush at the top. So I'm really happy how that's nice and solid. Let that dry. Then I'm gonna sort out this top bit. What I think I'm going to do yeah. on this bit is I'm gonna put a bit of wood here. And I've got some really thin it's not MDF, I can't really think what it is, um, that I think I can cut a shape to fit there. I can put a little tiny bit here, but this is gonna have the tongue and groove all the way up the side. So I think if I attach that there, I can do that. So I'm gonna glue that on, let it dry, and then I can think about that bit. Right, very brainwave. This is all now dry and secure. And I suddenly remembered, I've got this huge bit that was the back that I didn't use. So I'm gonna use this on the top to do that top bit. So actually, this bit, just hacked a bit off there, but if I, ooh, you can see how much you've got here. So actually you could use this to cut strips and wrap it around the side. I'm just gonna use a little bit that I've cut off with my tape measure. And then I've just held it up and I've marked where I'm gonna score down. You can actually cut this with scissors because it's not super thick. So I'm gonna cut that and then I will slide it into place. I'll cut it out expertly with the scissors. And then I've added another piece of wood. So I've run out. If I had any more, I would stick it across the top, but it's gonna have coving across there. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait for that little piece to dry. And then I'm going to expertly, so it's straight. I think I need to trim a little bit there. I'm gonna stick it on like that. So I've cut it so my piece is going to go across that, that goes across that, that bit is going to go over there. And I've done it to the end there. So, so much easier just using this little offcut. So I'll get that stuck on and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next when that's hey, dry. There it is, I'm pretty happy with that. It's obviously going to be edged all the way around so you won't see the top, the side and then this bit. So that's what it looks like from the side. Very happy, very easy. So little trick, if you do do this and don't and take the, don't use the back, then you can, as long as you've got a good Stanley knife, you can cut all this. Uh, you could actually use it down the side here. Brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna crack on and cut the front. All I'm doing to cut the fronts is I am using my little hacksaw. Cut, I'm just using my hacksaw and I'm using this so I get a nice straight edge. I'm not using my electron, I'm using this because it's just cutting pine. So it's super easy actually and it's raining anyway. So right, I'm going to cut the next bits and then I'll attach them. Right, that's all of those stuck on. I kind of wasn't sure what to do on this one because it is thicker. So I've put it in the middle and I may put some beading top and bottom or I might just, when it's all white, just put some, some cork along there. But what I've just realized is, so I've attached that, that's all glued, great, and coating will go up there. But this where I've got my arches, I'm gonna do an arch on this one. If you see, I've got the perfect marker and this side is slightly higher. So that's a little bit annoying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another 
section to just bring it down and then I'm going to cut my curves. I'll show you how I do it. This is going to be so easy because I'm going to use this backing again. So I'm going to cut all my bits and then I'll show you. There we go, it's done. I really probably should have cut one bit there, but the width that I have is not wide enough. So I haven't got a bit thick enough in one section, ideally. So I've done like this, but I'm gonna do lots of filler so you can't really see that once it's painted, you won't see it. Two bits were cut there. I have, let me try and show you behind. Can you see behind? I put some little blocks there Again, I didn't have a full strip and then it's glued to it there because this is a very lightweight and this is no one else. So it'll be very solid. And then here, it's kind of glued and taped there. So when it's dry, what I'll do is I'll go down along here with the no more nails and fill the gaps. So it really seeps in. But at the moment, I've just done the front. It stays quite dry white and I'll if there's tiny little bits I'll sort of maybe sand it down a little bit so it's nice and smooth that's all dry I'm gonna leave that now for at least an hour let it all dry then I'm gonna start putting the tongue and groove down there right good morning not good morning it's about four o'clock in the afternoon it's the following day I slept on this last night because it was bugging me I felt that it looked too thin compared to the other side. It looks just a little bit wider here. So what I'm going to do, just to build this out, because I'm quite restricted because I've got the this for the radiator. So I've cut some scraps. I've got a few MDF pieces. And what I'm gonna do, just to bring it out a little bit, I'm going to put some of these and just glue them on here all the way up, just to make it much, much thicker then get another one of these strips so it's going to double the thickness so it'll look thicker and then I can put my tongue groove onto the MDF so I've just cut some bits that I can stick all the way up the easiest way for me to do it and so once they're well and truly glued on I can then put on the tongue groove it'll stick out another thing on the top it'll look amazing so that's what I'm going to do now It's the following day and I have put this on without filming, but it's just the tongue and groove. So I added all these pieces last night um, to build it out a little bit because it's looking too thin. So I just chopped up some bits I had, stuck them all on, left them overnight. And then I've just attached three pieces of the tongue and groove. So I've got one big, big left, big bits left. And then what I've decided to do is I've added some small pieces just to bring this completely level and flat at the front. And then what I'm going to do with a bit of wood I've just bought here, just bought this wood and an edging strip. So it's basically another bit of this. And then I'm going to stick this on here. And then I'm going to put the bit across there. So it's got a bit of detail either side. Uh, I can't go any further out because I'm about to hit the radiator bit, but once that's painted, it's 
it's going to look good. I cut it at an angle there and I'll put a little bit of filler obviously there because I've got to do a bit of um, fixing on that crack that's appeared in the extension. So I'm going to stick this bit on here, which is the long bit I just bought. Get that on there, get the trim on, leave that to dry. This side's really good with this little trim that I put to make that a bit more curved. So it should match that a little bit. And then I'm going to put some filler up here, get the coving up. Then I need to fill. Luckily, with unlike with the billy, this doesn't have any holes. It, you, you can't move the shelves. I've only got some holes here that I've got to fill in just with a little bit of filler. So I'll do that. So I'll get this bit attached, glued on there, no more nails. I actually got my nail gun out, which I bought. It's brilliant. It wasn't really expensive. I think it was about £36 or four, certainly around £40. It's a plug-in one, so it's really good. So I just, no more nails this, and then I've gone across and nail gunned it in. So that's all there, nice and solid. Uh, so once I've got all this stuck on, I'll come back and show you. Good morning, it's the day after. I've just been and got a few more bits of wood from, from being q I've got an edge piece here that I want to use that will match the edge on the other side. So just put a little bit of primer on, but then I kind of sat back and looked at my other one. And if you look, that is slightly step forward. The reason for that is the Billy bookcase is 28 centimeters deep, so it sits proud. With this being the Gersby, I obviously wanted to be flat against the wall, so it doesn't stick out very much. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just to bring it out a bit, I'm just gonna put some wood across here. Now, obviously it depends the width you've got, if you want it to stick out or if you want it to be flush. But as this one over here does stick out, I kind of think I need to make this so it matches. So all I'm gonna do is just pop a wide bit there just to make it pop out a little bit. This is fantastic, I have to say. If you do use the Gersby, you really can use this because I put loads of no more nails to sort of attach it. It's absolutely rock hard. So all I'm gonna do is repeat the process, cut another piece like I have to fit around here and then cut two more bits and then just put that in front of some wood to build it out a little bit so it's all flush again. So that's flush. This was really just like to try and build a base structure and I'm gonna plonk it on the top. Um, you could use anything to build it out, but I'm just gonna do that. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna cut all the bits. I've got another strip, I actually, slightly wider, so I could make these slightly wider, because again, these are three centimeters on this side and this is only about two and a bit in it. You can notice it. Now I've been sort of sat in the evening looking at the two, I'm just gonna use some three centimeter strips, but everything I've used, I'll pop in the link below. It's all from B&Q picked up another no more nails as well the filler i'm using which i really like it's a bit smelly but it's this one it's it's polycell quick drying one and i've done it kind of here on this big hole because i didn't put a shelf in but on the gersby you don't use to fill it but i have filled it put some up here and all over these little holes as well just to fill that a little bit so i'm just going to add some more bits just to bring it all forward I mean, I think if I was building for scratch, I mean, I quite like the detail and stuff, but I think it's got to match that. So you kind of got to decide, but I think it's got to sort of match that side. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'll show you when I'm on to putting the coving up. on looks so much better so now it stands proud to match the other side and I put this corner piece on to give it a nice edge just glued it on there I'll cork all of this prime it all and everything I've put the new fronts on so they're a little bit fatter they are 3.5 mil I think I'll la label the link below saying these are the ones the strips the direct link to B&Q so now all I'm going to do is cobble around and do this again get that on and I can start primary again and painting and also picked up logs to put in there when I was at B&Q so yeah I'll get on with that top bit and I'll show you what I've done it. It's the following morning and I've attached everything and what I'm going to do this morning is do a little bit of sanding and a bit of priming. So up here um, it's all level now. I've filled in, I've basically brought it out of the back so I'd already put the back piece on so I used lots of bit of wood behind it, cut an identical one glued it on 
Then up here, this is where I've got to do some sanding and you know make it all nice and level, is I squidged in bits of paper to fill it with no one else. And then I got my filler, this one, to like fill in the arch. So I've got a bit of work to do on here. I wanted to leave it till it got really, really dry. So what I'll do is gonna give it a nice sand down, get the edges all nice and sanded straight. And then hopefully I can get it looking perfectly curved. But I quite enjoyed doing it actually, a bit of a faff, but it was easy enough to do. So basically you have the back bit. It's almost like a kind of Ikea furniture because here you've got either side and inside is filled with like ziggy zaggy bits of cardboard. So I kind of did that. So this side's much better now. It's popping out here. So it looks like it's set forward like the other one. So it does match a lot, lot better. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to do lots of sanding, then give it a bit of a paint and I've then I've nearly finished. So I've got to do a bit of cutting obviously to get this around here. So I'll show you my sanding process and stuff and then we're pretty much done. That's obviously stuck at the top, a bit weird, going to do a bit of filling there, but I can't really work out. Any, any comments do let me know what you think I could have done differently on that piece. This is covering up a steel, or the bolts sticking out the steel, so we had to do that. So... I think once it's all painted and filled, it'll look a little bit neater because you can see the line at the moment. But yeah, definite tip, use the back of the unused cupboard to do this bit, brilliant. And these bits make it look so much better, the three and a half centimetre wide thin bits. So yeah, so I'm gonna get on with that and then I'll show you what I get up to. finished i've got the christmas theme going on the tv and the logs are looking amazing i've literally got to give that another coat i think and just put some uh i think cork or something across the bottom dogs are loving back being back where they go there very happy with it i've got a basket now i'm going to put the remote controls in there so we know where they are uh yeah very pleased my builder's just been around actually and he says you have saved an absolute fortune doing that yourself and he agreed i was right the way i've done the caving so there we are all finished so if you do have a go please let me know in the comments below if you fancy having a go if i could do this anybody can it's definitely been a labor of love make it up as you go along but i'm very happy with it let me take let me just show you a bit further back so the tongue and groove is looking lovely down the side that's a definite uh easy thing to do better than mdf so i'm at that stage now where i need to get all my christmas stuff i've butchered this side so i need to put more christmassy bits do check out my video on that one if you've not seen that one before uh it just makes the fire look better and having the logs there this is i'll link these lights they're brilliant because they've got a timer which i think is eight hours either six or eight hours so when it gets dark i'll click it on uh and it's just popped in at the top absolutely delighted how it's turned out i can tick that project off i'm now going to go and finish my ikea pax wardrobes upstairs but i will give you a sneak peek of my next project please do excuse the mess this is halloween ready to go into the loft my new project is going to go here i am building using two of these ikea units basically a secret bar so do make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that i'm going to be starting that next week i'm very excited about that ready for christmas but back to this, loved it, so good. I need to do a bit of tossing up. I'll put on the screen where it's come to um, with extra bits and pieces, but I am very glad that I made it pop out a little so it does match that side much, much better. The dogs are happy to be back there. Still got a little bit of tidying up to do here, but yeah, it's getting there really lovely. So my Christmas tree, I think I am actually gonna put here, uh, really use these in the winter so I can have a big tree sort of there I think it's artificial so the radio doesn't really matter but yeah very very pleased hope you enjoyed that do hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments check out my other videos thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video
exciting new project. I'm rebuilding a secret bar using two of these IKEA units, two billy book cases, a fake marble worktop. It's going to pull out. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So this is very much the core shot. So let's get on with uh, building. I'll show you the design. I want to do this in a week. Let's see if we can do it.